yes, let me uh, heartily welcome you to the New Horizon Final Conference and in particular to the session on the transformative impact of RI. So um, we, that is Merve Jolmas and uh, me, Susanne Bührer, we did prepare this uh, session based on a pilot action that was conducted in the course of the social lab on SWOFs, the Horizon 2020 program pillar on science with and for society. Um, so the, our session today is structured as follows. So that is the idea behind that session. We would first start uh, with explaining the motivation and the aim of this uh, session. Then we will briefly talk about uh, why the transformative impact of RI seems to be an important topic. Uh, then we will present uh, the social lab work result, a questionnaire like RI impact template. And in the fourth part, we would like to start a discussion and interaction with you, the audience. So before we start with the content, we would like to get uh, to know our audience. So for that purpose, we prepared a Mentimeter. So the first question would be, um, is Helmut just integrated this link to the Mentimeter to the chat? The first question is, how would you describe your experience with a New Horizon project? Uh, answer categories are, I'm a member of the project team. I was involved in the social lab process, including pilot action, or I have no direct links to the project, but I'm engaged in other RI projects. Okay. That's pretty interesting. So we have at least not only an inner circle, so we have more roughly half of the people joining our session stemming from the New Horizon project, but at least roughly one third of people from outside. That's great. So the, the next question we would be interested in is uh, your institutional background. Um, please indicate whether you stem from a higher education institution, a research performing organization, a research funding organization, including the commission, the a civil society organization, a business or industry or others. Okay, that is rather clear cut. <laughs> that Very was, concentrated. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the vast majority of our session participants stem from research performing organizations. Okay, we have prepared one last question that is about your evalu uh, evaluation experience. So when we're talking about impact, that is of course strongly related to all kind of evaluation activities. So what we would like to know is what your role in evaluation and impact assessment is. Uh, answer categories are I'm actively carrying out evaluations or impact assessments. I'm uh, commissioning evaluations or impact assessments. I'm object of evaluation and impact assessments, or I'm doing research about evaluation and impact assessments, or as a last uh, other possibility, I have no prior experience in that field. Okay, thank you very much for, for this information. Um, so that means for us that we have to be <laughs> cautious in using not only very specific terminologies, uh, so hopefully we, we can stick to that uh, challenge in the following presentation. Uh, so let me continue with the overall motivation and aim of this session. Uh, so as I said before, we would like to present you results from a social lab uh, that was conducted uh, for the Science with and for Society program line, in particular the pilot action one on the benefits of RRI. A pilot action, so at least half of you who are <laughs> members of the New Horizon team uh, should know that the pilot action in the New Horizon context is a bottom-up social experiment designed to address specific societal challenges aimed at practical implementation. Uh, 
So, and uh, the keyword practical implementation meant for that particular pilot action on the benefits of RI that we co-created with our pilot action participants a template with a compilation of scientific, societal and economic impacts of RI. So what we like to do today with you together is to validate and adopt uh, the findings and the template to get a feedback from your experience and enrich the template accordingly with new perspectives and also draw some general conclusions about future RI evaluation approaches. So why do we think that the topic of the impact of RI is important? So generally spoken, the topic of impact is generally high on the agenda of research policy. We also observe a new social contract of science. On the one hand, from science uh, itself, so the scientists are increasingly interested uh, and asking themselves what contributions science can or should make to politics, society, culture, or the economy. And on the other side, we observe uh, an increasing expectations from policy and society as regards the contributions of science to address grand challenges and problem solving. So the, the concept of transformative science is rather similar to our RI approaches uh, to address these expectations to uh, show the usefulness of science. Uh, that is, transformative science means that science should be more embedded, self-reflective and co-productive and also more inter and transdisciplinary. Um, quite apart from these more general uh, reflections, uh, we had a very, very practical motivation. So as most of you will know, presumably, the Horizon 2020 project coordinators were asked to show the RI benefits and impacts of their funded projects by using the MORI indicators. MORI stands for a project that was commissioned directly by the European Commission and the acronym stands for monitoring the evolution and benefits for RI. But uh, actually it wasn't it was hardly possible to use the MORI indicators at a project level because the MORI indicators refer to the national level and uh, covered mainly input and process indicators, but no or only some few output outcome or impact indicators. And so that was our practical motivation to engage in that uh, pilot action. And I would now uh, no, no, before I give the, the word to, to Merve, who described the pilot action in more detail, um, still the, my last uh, slide, um, our, our core assumption, or, or we have two basic questions uh, for that session. So the first one is, will an approach such as RI, which specifically aims to improve the links between science and society, generate different kinds of impacts or in other ways than pure curiosity driven and peer centered science. So the underlying assumption is that the research process, uh, yes, at least shapes partly the research outcomes. And the second question we have uh, is how should an appropriate evaluation approach look like to identify impacts of RRI? So here we assume that the aim of the evaluation uh, shapes or influences the monitoring the evaluation processes and finally also the evaluation results, for example, in terms of learning. So now I would give to um, the word to uh, Merve, who describes the social lab work in more detail. Thank you, Susanne. So uh, my name is Merve and uh, together with Susanne, we were both uh, members of the Science with and for Society social lab and also members of the pilot action one on the benefits of RI, which was later uh, changed, the title was changed later to measuring the impacts of RI. And uh, so in this, in this section, we would like to take a closer look at the social lab work. So what was done, the procedure, and the process that led to the development of this template and uh, we'd like to describe the background and the motivation of this template. Um, as a second step, we'd like to um, look at potential areas for application and reflect on the potential utility of this template. Um, also, we'd like to enrich it with your feedback, with your critique to alter and to, to improve this template in a later uh, discussion section. And finally, um, before and after that, we would also have uh, try to have a closer look at this template and look at the individual building blocks 
and look at individual items to, to discuss with you whether you can relate to these, whether you feel that they are appropriate to measure what they are supposed to measure. So starting with the, the background and um, the motivation for this uh, pilot action for this template, as Susanna already described, so it emerged from a pilot action that was called sharing the benefits of RRI and that uh, started in the year 2019 and it was a two year, a more than two year process with um, some physical but also virtual working meetings and as um, for for example, those of you uh, working in a social lab or who were involved in a pilot action, uh, you know that every pilot action is designed around a specific challenge and that um, each of these social experiments um, address one uh, particular challenge. And the challenge that we addressed in this pilot action was the, the chronic lack of impact monitoring for the, uh, the, the impacts of RRI. And so we tackled this um, by developing a template that could pay attention to the output, outcome, and impact of a certain RI project. Um, as Suzanne already said, so the starting point was uh, the formal requirement of H2020 projects to apply the MORI indicators. However, as she also said, these are less suited because they represent rather aggregated data, they are on the national level and have rather uh, more of these process and input related um, indicators. So um, to come up with this template and to conduct this work, we, um, we build on existing work, we build on this existing set of MORI indicators, um, reflected on them, discussed them, discussed the indicators in group work and refined them further. And we came out with a template that we would like to show you in some, some slides. Um, the indicators are, as the MORI indicators, clustered in three groups, so scientific, societal and demographic, and uh, economic indicators. Um, we, so the pilot action group uh, was a very diverse and very engaged group of, of many, many people with different backgrounds, different cultural, national, and also uh, disciplinary backgrounds, so here you can see uh, for example, also Shauna um, or other uh, Fabio, for example, which you might have seen in, in previous sessions yesterday and today also. Um, now I would like to show you the, 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 on, a, on a meta level, the building blocks of the template, which is so far, or which is currently a multi-page document. And um, what you can see here, the, the orange one is the, the original version and the very first version we came out with after our first working meeting in 2019. So this is an example for one of the clusters, so societal and democratic impacts. And you can see the list on the left is the, the outputs. You can see that the indicators are grouped along a temporal level, so short-term outputs, mid-term outcomes, and long-term impacts. So this is what was done in the very first stage. Afterwards, we adjusted this template and we made some further adjustments, additions, and changes. So for example, um, to this distinction between output, outcome, and impact, we added further building blocks to the document which were also inspired and motivated by um, the MORI project and existing MORI work. For example, we have the first question block in this, in this uh, survey-like, in this questionnaire-like document. The first block of this document asks you as a user of uh, who wants to assess the impacts of your RRI project to indicate some general information like why um, the motivation of your project like is it curiosity driven challenge driven uh, the potential uh, recipients or users of the results which you would like to assess and um, analyze um, as a second building block of this template we have um, a, spe a specific focus on rri and the keys the rri keys 
which I haven't listed all. So you can here, for example, see gender equality and ethics. And we're asking here, um, are the following aspects systematically taken into account in your project? And here you find um, indications and guidance that are um, adjusted to the RRI keys that help you to align them to those keys. For example, I consider gender aspects in my research design and we have a rather, uh, we have answer categories such as yes, no, I don't know. Uh, as said before, for all of the, the all RRI keys. Um, next, so we have this general first building block. We have this role of RRI building block. Plus, we have um, different building blocks for each of the three clusters. So for the scientific, the um, societal and the economic benefits of RRI. This is just a snapshot. This is not everything, but what you can see here is, again, we have this distinction between short, mid and long term effects of RRI for the scientific dimension. And we have the, the indicators listed. And these indicators are, um, so for, for all of the three clusters we have, we had three subgroups in the pilot action working on them. And we took the MORI indicators, we, we sat down on a table and in those subgroups, we discussed and reformulated each of the, the basic indicators, trying to adjust them to the project level. We reflected on them, and if we had the, uh, if we thought that they that this was not sufficient, we added further indicators. Uh, what was done later? We added the the we added a scale, or we added not only a yes no answer category, but we tried to level it and to make it more differentiated and nuanced. So I expect the respective impact or. I don't know. So we have four potential um, answer categories, which may also be uh, adjusted and extended afterwards. And looking, for, so if, if we reflect on the um, on this template and, and the potential practicability and utility of of such a of such a template, we thought that it could be used over a project. Uh, entire lifetime and even beyond. So for example, if you are in the planning phase of a project, uh, of an RRI project, you are designing it, you can uh, get this, you can use this template as an inspiration and guidance to um, set up your research project, the research design. Um, you can get inspiration to um, to define how you want to have your collaboration, how you want to engage with stakeholders, uh, which factors or val uh, values or variables you want to address or consider, for example, ethical issues or gender issues. Uh, secondly, uh, you can use this template also uh, during the implementation phase of a project for adaptation purposes. So you might, you may, go scan the, the indicators and, and use this template uh, again as an inspiration to see whether you are on track, whether there might be um, something missing in your research design and make some corrections that uh, could help you to improve your research design and maybe help you also to improve the interaction with uh, society, with your stakeholders and, and many other factors. And thirdly, um, what may be much more important and interesting also for this session today is um, what could be done at the end, either when you are going towards the end of a project or when the project is already done, is over, and you want to know what you did, uh, what the results, the findings of your, of your project were, and um, which, whether we can learn from them, what, uh, whether we can recycle and uh, translate what was done in the project. So what is actually possible with this template is that you can um, operationalize um, th those invisible things that happened, that are happening in your project, those impacts, those effects. Uh, this can help you to make comparisons uh, 
in project or also across and between project comparisons can help you for uh, self-assessment. And uh, so from a technical point of view or from a um, methodological point of view, how could this look like? So we have seen that uh, we have for each of these indicators, we have these leveled answer categories. And what could be done or what, what, is, um, what could be done is to use this as a Likert scale, although this is not yet a proper Likert scale with, with four items. So let's say we add a fifth dimension or we adjust the answer categories to, for example, um, I fully agree, I do not agree at all, or we stay with this, what we could do is we would quantify or we would have quantifications and this would allow us to make, uh, to make analysis, statistical analyses and either for specific projects or um, collect these data from multiple uh, sources, so from multiple projects and have cross-project analyses. Um, so in practical terms, this could also look like uh, like this, if we say that a number of projects that a number of RI projects that have come to an end get this template and fill this template out, for example, digitally on a, on a survey platform, on a questionnaire platform, and we collect these data um, in the software and are then able to export them to a, a statistical uh, program. We could make um, we could actually make a lot of analyses. So, for example, we could get the descriptives. Um, we could examine means, frequencies, so the very basics. Uh, we could calculate correlations, meaning we could, for example, uh, we may find a correlation between type of project or um, type of research and a specific uh, impact cluster. Let's say uh, we could find that. A curiosity driven projects uh, are have a higher concentration on scientific impacts or vice versa or with related with other um, dimensions um, we may also in general terms we may find um, if we collect these these data from multiple projects not only from one project we may um, be able to find um, where impacts are concentrated um, make may look at the patterns and the relationships with other variables, with other factors like, uh, like the characteristics of the project or other variables that are not yet included in the template, um, like contextual factors, and then try to make um, assess and, and check and examine the relationship between a project's nature, its character, its, its um, specific situation, and the impacts that are generated or were generated by this. Um, at the same time, so besides uh, the concentration of impacts or potential patterns that we could identify on uh, this way, we could also find hotspots or problem areas. And by seeing that, for example, by finding um, prob these, these problem areas or weak points, uh, this may help us to detect um, the action space and where there is still uh, work to be done. So, um, besides, so besides this, um, the utility of making these comparisons and making the invisible measurable, um, as, as some first reflections on this tool, we think that it could be very useful for many RI projects also outside uh, the this, this SWAFs context, um, using this template can help to make closer linkages and cross-project learning and synergies because we connect the, the projects, we connect knowledge hubs, for example, such as New Horizon and Supermori, because um, as we said, this work is built on Mori, but it also, um, brings new insights that may be relevant for ongoing discussions and ongoing work that is done in the Supermori project. But um, of course, um, if, if we use such kind of a standardized questionnaire, this has also limitations because we, we want to assess impacts, we want to examine impacts. 
which is a very complex and complicated issue. So, of course, this may have the risk of um, oversimplification and we may oversimplify processes that are much more complex, dynamic and emergent by nature than uh, we may be able to capture with this, uh, with this document. So, yeah, these were, these were our first uh, reflections on the template. And we would now like to give some space for the first questions, the first comments, and afterwards look at the template more in detail and go through the, um, the items on a more individual level together with Susanne. Thanks a lot, Merve, uh, for, for that uh, presentation on the building blocks of these uh, RI impact template. So I did not see any comments in the chat so far. So we would like to invite you, yes, please, if you have any questions as regards the building blocks, the overall concept, please don't hesitate to post them. I might have a question. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mary, for the presentation. It was really interesting. So if I understood correctly, this template will cover all RRI principles, correct? Not the principles, but more... Um, you are right. So our starting point were, were, were the six RI keys. So the traditional ones, so ethics, uh, blah, blah, blah. But we did and not necessarily the, the RI principles like being anticipatory, reflexive, responsible, and inclusive, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so our starting point indeed, indeed were these six, six or five or six keys. Yeah, and then the other one is that I wasn't so Merva mentioned during her presentation that the idea is that all RI projects will use this template so you can do this statistical analysis to make conclusions. Is that right? Is that an open call for all of us to use it? Because I find it interesting indeed. Yeah, uh, that would be, of course, uh, perfect. So uh, as, as we said before, the, the, the RI projects were, or the SWAS project were, were a bit challenged uh, with this expectation from the commission to, to, to show their, their benefits. And so that was then our, our trial to, to give them uh, a template at hand where they might assess their own project against these, these different uh, dimensions. But we did not yet uh, circulate it or some uh, to to a broader community. It, it's uh, just we finished our work a few weeks before that that, that conference now, <laughs> where we had these uh, consensus among the pilot action team members. Uh, so as always, we were were a bit late. But uh, I I'm really happy for that suggestions to to circulate it uh, to a, to a broader audience and make it accessible. And so far, we saw, uh, show that uh, on the last slide, uh, that there is a link uh, at the New Horizon website where you can find th this template in this current stage. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. If someone Ingeborg, can pop it in the chat. Thank you, Emma, for the question. Hmm? Ingeborg uh, raised her hand. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ingeborg. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting uh, to see all this work being car carried out in the SWAF social lab. Um, it sort of aligns in time with the work that we've been doing in Supermodi with the SWAF 14 group. So that is mm -hmm. eight uh, or actually nine uh, SWAF funded projects on territorial RRI. And we started off with developing a framework, basically what you have been making. I think, uh, but it as uh, it, it soon turned out that um, this aim of having a common framework mm -hmm. didn't work out because at the point that point in time these projects were already committed to a kind of monitor, monitoring and evaluation plan as it was written in their proposal, so they couldn't change that, of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
And when we then studied uh, the, the monitoring evaluation plans of those eight projects, they were as diverse as uh, you couldn't imagine. So much more diverse than we thought they would be. Although, of course, all the elements that you have in your, in your template are there in some, in more, some more or less um, ways. Uh, and there was no specific need also from these projects to, to change it. Mm -hmm. Because they all said that they were having these very specific local context or regional context that they were working in. So uh, it was not up to them to, to change that properly. So that I think it's a kind of a, a reality check mm -hmm. to um, these kinds of uh, impact frameworks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, we also learned that the, at the level of the project execution and the project partners, and we have a lot of them on board here. Of course, the needs and, and the, the things that you want to, to measure are different from, from the local, the regional context, because the people there, they don't recognize RRI. So it's very much also an exercise within the context of an, an RRI bubble. And to really get beyond that is, is is not so easy as, as many of these um, 12, 14 uh, uh, participants mentioned. So we have carried out four specific focus groups on uh, RRI evaluation approaches, indicators and stakeholders, which raised a lot of interesting uh, uh, material, but no common, common framework, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, so could you reflect on that? So, of course, everybody and the commission in particular is, is looking for, for frameworks and, and inspirations and guides. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as you start off finding that and using that, it, everybody turns to their own specific reality. Yeah, yeah. No. Um... Uh, I, I fully agree. I think when, when we started the pilot action, we, we had uh, some sort of a window of opportunity. So uh, because at least the, the, the projects that were represented in, in our social lab uh, did not yet have such uh, elaborated own evaluation approaches. So they, they were more or less lost with this <laughs> expectation of the commission to, to show their benefits. Uh, uh, but then, uh, as often in, in that project context, uh, Horizon 2020 context, it, it took a while until we, we finally came, came to an end. And yes, I would admit we, we are maybe a bit late now in the process, uh, that that's one, one of uh, one weakness. And we are also, we, we missed to, to uh, our start the exchange with, with other tools and experiences, for example, as you mentioned, in, in your, your ecosystem. Uh, that, that is, of course, a second uh, even stronger uh, weakness. Um, uh, I, I, what, what I would say is that at least the template as it is at the moment that, that we had developed in this pilot action context uh, could serve as an inspiration tool, at least for mm -hmm. those uh, also applicants for future projects. Uh, no more swaps, of course, <laughs> but I don't know, Videra or what else <laughs> to, to build their, their project plans then on, on that uh, kind of systematic uh, with, with this, yes. With, with this time scale and, and the different dimensions where, where you might expect any kind of impacts. Ingeborg, do you have a follow-up question or can... Oh, no, no, that's it. Okay, then... I uh, can, uh, I will lower my hand. I have a, uh, I have mm -hmm. a, a question here from Anne. Mm -hmm. Anne, do you want to pose it yourself or should I read it? I'll go ahead, please read oh, it. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you for the interesting presentation, a question. On which level do you see applicable applicability of the template? That is mm -hmm. to say, when you speak of a project level, you mean New Horizon or Super Mori, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera level, or and not a specific pilot action or sub projects within New Horizon. Mm -hmm. So yes. what do you call the, the, the project mm -hmm. level? Yes, uh, exactly. It's it's the first meaning. So it's the overall project. Uh, so for example, New Horizon, for example, Super Mori, and for example, all the other RRI-friended uh, project, but, but also outside the SWOFs program line. 
to every kind of uh, yes uh, projects, either at the European uh, funded by the European Union or even even national one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but 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 not the subunits. Okay, and then I have from here about Niestroy uh, a question. I would test it inclusive adaptations for assessing transformative research mm -hmm. projects across the whole institute. Hence, for well, this is already an inspiration. Ingeborg, do you want to add something to that or? No, it was not a question. It was just a confirmation to Susanne that it's uh, indeed, mm -hmm. uh, even if it has weaknesses, it is uh, inspirational or it's a good basis for what I'm um, currently heading at. So would be happy to be in direct change because also you made in the beginning this comparison that RI and uh, transformative mm -hmm. science uh, is so close. You had a list of characteristics. Yep. I mean, this could then also feed in to the exercise that I'm um, currently preparing. So it's just the timing is great and would be happy to be in contact. Okay, yes, great. Yes, yes, please do so. So you, you find our contact information later though on, on, on the slides. Yeah. Great. Uh, Ralph already shared the link to mm -hmm. to the to the website and um, the the tablet is actually just online, has been online for some days and also related to Emma's questions before Emma's question before. So this is really the first time we communicate these reflections to a wider audience. So this was really this remained in um the context of the pilot action and the 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 swaths work and this is the first mm -hmm. time we go to 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 greater audiences with these uh, reflections and these um ideas with statistical analyses for example for evaluation are really a uh, first considerations and first thoughts and are very maybe raw material to receive your feedback then in the, in the, the next steps as well and to, to, for example, also get your insights on what you think, what um, as, as potential users of such a template, do you think that it is practicable? What would you change? Uh, maybe you may add um, building blocks that we haven't considered, or maybe you would like to add contextual factors and assess some more variables on different levels to make it more comprehensive than it is uh, right now. There is nothing in the chat now, so I can ask my question. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I, I like it very much what you're doing, but I'm also a little bit puzzled because there's so much going on. On the one hand, you're, there's this attempt in, in the New Horizon project, and there is uh, an attempt in the Supermore project. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at your list, Immediately, it came to my mind the societal readiness thinking tool that uh, that Ingeborg and Niels have been preparing within the New Horizon project, and so there are two issues. I think uh, on the one hand, I think we should put some effort into into finding not developing four different uh, impact measurement uh, uh, tools, but try to to harmonize it if this is possible, and also and in the same in the same line of argument. Uh, did you look at the societal readiness thinking tool as an inspiration uh, when yep. you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, th th thanks a lot for bringing that up. Uh, we we are far from from <laughs> being uh, perfect in that regard. But yes, we we used that uh, the societal readiness thinking tool in one of the the, the pilot action meetings as um, as as an input source. So so we presented the tool there. And uh, used it that uh, yes as an important source for, for our further uh, discussion. But uh, honestly speaking, we did not uh, systematically uh, follow up then afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's yeah, I think that can everybody can look into the chat. Mm -hmm. um, there's a comment by Cherifa Ayara, Ayari. Great presentation. It might be necessary to create algorithms, input variables, mm -hmm. uh, factors as much as possible for relational study and impact at global level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Is there still room in the New Horizon project to put together at least an overview of such tools? That's a question to you. Susanne, ah, no, no, it, it isn't. Ah, I, I thought that was a question to you <laughs> as a New Horizon project coordinator. Uh, so, well, I, um, not, I can only say um, since um, I think this is uh, out there, the New Horizon project is uh, has another four uh, months. I think there are other projects who could take that, that up and will take that up. I definitely, I think Super Mori will take this up. Mm -hmm. So I think um, uh, uh, in the in the ecosystem, it will, um, Ingeborg, please beat me if I say something stupid, but I think in the ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, it will be discussed, probably be discussed there, it will be discussed in a Super Mario project. And I think we just have to stay in contact on that, or people mm -hmm. who are interested in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just following up on that, I don't think that within the ecosystem we are collecting um, um, frameworks for the sake of frameworks, but we have been comparing them, so more content-wise. Uh, but in other projects, I know that they create these excels with an endless amount of, of mm -hmm. frameworks and tools and uh, and things that are related to RRI, and, and we have a set of overviews, an overview in Supermori, and I know in Cherries there's a, a very extensive toolbox as well. Mm -hmm. So in terms of material, there's never a lack of material, but there is kind of um, a, a lack of of harmonization. And the yeah. question then is, do we want harmonization or not? Because I think the the local contexts are always should always prevail, and and not it's not the framework, but it should serve as a kind of a guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, and as regards the societal readiness thinking tool, that I, I recognize some of the questions and that is especially also for inspiration and guidance and also has this stage gated approach from the early phases of a project design up until the end phase. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there is a lot of overlap, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have uh, mm -hmm. anything more in the in in, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then then we would uh, could continue with a more uh, detailed discussion on on single single uh, items that we have put uh, onto the list or, or co uh, co developed with the uh, um, pilot action one. Um, members. So what you see here is this, this template for the potential scientific uh, impact or benefits of RRI. Um, so we differentiate between the short, midterm and long term uh, outputs, outcomes and impacts then. And what we would like to discuss with you is uh, whether you agree on this set of items, whether you find them meaningful, whether they correspond to correspond to your own experiences or is whether there is something missing in that uh, list of how many is it maybe 15 15 items There is no immediate comment on that. Ah, Dr. Magdalena, please. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, this is Anna and Merve for your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, very insightful. Looking forward to hear more about it also for 
the Super Mario project, of course. Um, just quickly, when looking on mm -hmm. um, certain terminologies, it might be, it's always so difficult to um, explain what we mean by certain things, because when I uh, read weakening pseudoscience or broaden problem framing, it could be, of course, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So probably, yeah, um, I, I, I have no solution so far how to solve this issue, um, but of course, um, yeah, I'm also willing to discuss this in, um, yeah, in a different occasion, um, how, mm -hmm. how things could be framed. I mean, in every questionnaire, mm -hmm. it's yep. the same problem, of course. Mm -hmm. But for especially on, for people who are not, RI-ish scholars. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I know that we will go on with with this work in Supermori anyhow. So. Mm. No, but I think that that's a very important hint uh, that we had also discussed in, in the course of the pilot action, uh, that we would need some more concrete operationalizations of the, the single items. And I think indeed that that is a task that should be done uh, if we have in, uh, intensified the, the discussion about possibilities of conversions or bringing all that stuff that we have uh, developed so far in the different project context uh, together. And then when we then have a final final set, uh, really put some emphasis on, on concrete definitions. And in electronic versions, you could simply just use pop-up windows. And, yeah, and give an explanation that. about what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Erich asked the question whether self-assessment is um, sufficient. Um, it depends. <laughs> uh, I think ideally you, you have, have both perspectives. Uh, you have a, a self-assessment on the one hand and also an assessment uh, validated by, by external peers or experts uh, to Yes, to justify the expression evaluation, maybe even well, you also have self evaluations, of course. Um, but that lead, brings me a bit to the uh, overall question that we have here. I, I think uh, when when I listen to this uh, really great presentation of Lyndon Ferrer uh, at the beginning of this week, um, I, I think they, they put a lot of uh, efforts into flagging of RI projects, into setting up in key impact pathways, uh, in defining key performance indicators, etc. But it's really the question, why why do they do that? Um, <laughs> and, and which is the purpose of the different kind of activities? And, and so I would really say, uh, first of all, it's really important to, to be clear about the objectives of monitoring evaluation and impact assessment activities. And then you can define afterwards whether internal uh, or self-assessment approaches are, are the best way to, to address the challenges or is it an external view on the, and that, um, yes, this is something I, I think that should also be reflected before you define in a very pragmatic way a list of indicators. <laughs> you should really be clear about the purpose of, of such um, activities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is there maybe something that that you're missing that uh, you would see in this list that is not indicated yet? I think not yet. So, so if you then don't, don't mind, I, I would suggest that we continue with the with the broader question uh, that we have at the end, so that we leave these these list of of single items. So, just uh, thanks for for the feedback that we got so far. The the remarks, uh, of course, the uh, expectations, or so the, the absolutely correct expectation that we should. Interact more in that regard. Uh, 
so uh, yes, and then I would like to, to, to put the, the, these final questions to you that we have prepared in, in form of a Mentimeter again. Okay, then let's go to the Mentimeter. So we skipped the economic and the societal ones. So let me go to the browser. Please again, uh, find the link in the chat. Mm -hmm. And this is the next question. Mm -hmm. From your personal experience, what do you consider to be the most important challenge in impact evaluation and monitoring? And, and here, to, just to, to explain, here we would like to, to collect just your, your uh, a couple of sentences, word, adjectives, etc. So, so we didn't prepare any answer categories. I hope it works. Um, okay. um, yes. You can find the link and the code again in the chat. Mm -hmm. And the word, the word cloud uh, here starts appearing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So timing has been mentioned multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay, now oh. they're coming. Mm -hmm. So timing seems to be the most important one so far. Attribution problem, multiple times. And diversity mm -hmm. as a cluster. I found that there's one one input the the openness to new impacts. Would somebody like to specify that? It sounds very interesting. <laughs> Uh, hi, Susanna. Yeah, that was um, me, uh, Shauna. So I was actually part of this um, social lab discussion and Mervra and I had really interesting um, conversation about how indicators should be used as forms of inspiration. And we talked a lot about adaptability and how indicators should be um, adaptable to um, track and um, embrace un unexpected incomes and or, uh, impacts my, um, and to be more, um, you know, uh, to embrace the uncertainty when um, starting out with a set of indicators and use that um, uncertainty as a way to uh, open up conversation about what an impact is in a certain uh, evaluation context. Thank you. So thank you all for this, these many entries. Uh, should we go to the next question or still mm -hmm. look at some of these? I, I think I, I would, would continue, but, but it's really very interesting, yeah. these kind of answers. And, and yes, I think we have to think about them after, afterwards, after the session again. Okay, then, so I mm -hmm. go to the next question. Um, can current evaluation and impact assessment approaches strengthen the transformative potential of RRI? What do you think?
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a question to the chat. Uh, what means current? That that's uh, in, indeed correct. Uh, for, for me, a uh, blueprint are the uh, the uh, about the European Commission focusing on five categories. Um, Ah, okay. There, there's this efficiency, uh, effectiveness, uh, coherence. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. After being a bit more precise, <laughs> we now have a slight majority for saying no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I would go to the our, our final question. So I, I think it was also in, in the world cloud, uh, the responsible evaluation. And so that question directly refers to that aspect. So uh, should evaluation approaches be themselves more responsible in terms of anticipation, reflexivity, inclusion, and responsiveness? Oh, we have a clear picture on that. <laughs> would, would somebody from the audience like to, to uh, explain? Or does... Who has right. to say no to this question? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for, for that uh, also Mentimeter feedback. I think that was for us at least uh, helpful to, to get such an overview of these from this group of 24, 25 uh, people. Here are our contact information. You, we already had this information on this uh, template and report on the pilot action uh, in, in the chat. Um, I think really for, for, for me personally, it was very helpful to, to get this, this feedback and comments, especially in terms of a better exchange or improved exchange with ongoing activities in, in other projects. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks also for uh, any further contacts for, from those who would like to, to use the template. Um, Mabel, would you like to, to add something? Um, no, I'm, I think it was also uh, your insights and uh, the word cloud, for example, so your comments are very valuable uh, to this to the further refinement of the templates. And I'm also happy to uh, get in exchange with you. And there were some, some there were many suggestions on testing mm -hmm. this template. I think this is mm -hmm. a very good idea to really start in, mm -hmm. for practical implementation and get, uh, first of all, make concretize the the items and then also go into some pretests with potential users mm -hmm. very uh very helpful of course and thank you all for all your comments of course mm -hmm. yes, yes. And, and and the final thanks uh to all these pilot action members uh, mentioned by by Mave at the beginning uh who are mostly not not here today but who really gave us a great great support during the whole pilot action process. Thanks to, to Erich and his team for offering these, these great support in yeah, preparing the conference, but also offering us the opportunity to, to run that particular pilot action. So thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah.